When I first heard the the sort of true story of Arthur the King, I it's almost like unbelievable. You're like this is something out of movies, and it was so such a beautiful story, and you know the idea that this dog just was like you, just kind of chose these people, and and then eventually this family. It's just such a beautiful story, and you know who doesn't love. A, a story about, well, first of all, a dog, animals in general, but like a, of a happy ending of of a of a dog that didn't have a family and then got one, and it was it's just so beautiful. I love it so much, and um, I also was just drawn to the project and the movie because I'm so I, I really love anything that includes you know learning new skills or learning new um well just about these athletes these incredible athletes and um i got to really challenge myself in that respect and my character is such a badass like she's real you know just comes from this kind of legacy family of like climbers and she's yeah she's an amazing athlete and i just thought the character was just really cool and just the whole story this whole kind of saga that they go through together is just yeah a lot of fun so my character is a real like she's a real like an incredible athlete herself and she's really starting to make moves in the kind of competitive climbing world and um she's got this fantastic relationship with her dad where he's um kind of her trainer but also they they're kind of going through like a family crisis at the moment that we meet them because he's just kind of had a very difficult like health diagnosis and she doesn't want to leave him to go and do a race but he's like her first <laughs> hello <laughs> her first um supporter cheerleader and he's like you're not that <laughs> Arlo this is amazing hello okay so they've just had a kind of a difficult health diagnosis for her dad and she does not want to leave him. And um, he's the first person to be like, you're not staying here for me. Go and do this thing. Go, um, yeah, go chase your dreams. So Arthur's journey is amazing. He is this kind of street dog who, um, you know, is often mistreated and has, when we kind of meet him, he has a lot of injuries and is not very well looked after at all. He has no one to look after him. And at one of the checkpoints, um, he meets Michael, who kind of just gives him a snack, like one, a piece of his food. And the team just carries on with their race. And then 200 or something miles later, they realize they're being followed and um, yeah, it's, it's Arthur or who they come to name as Arthur. <laughs> Angel Yuka, he's so sweet and so clever. He's so clever in what they do, how they teach them to do things. It's so amazing. Um, but he was such a sweet dog. My favorite thing ever was to just get on the floor and just like cuddle with him. He was so sweet and like affectionate and um, it's just so amazing to watch him do anything because his face, like his beautiful face, I mean, you can't, you, it's just, he, oh, he's just, you just love him, you can't help it. And so they, they, uh, they he was so clever and so like just, like good at what at acting <laughs> and doing what he's supposed to do and yeah I think Arthur's story is it's amazing I mean we hear re rescue stories all the time but this just feels kind of epic I mean this dog followed a team for hundreds of miles and in a way kind of became their fifth member of their team and he helped them he kept them going I just think any situation, if you, yeah, any situation with a dog is better before you even, you know, like it just makes everything better. And they're in, 
this tough situation, these tough conditions, and that's something that Arthur really knew about. And so when this person showed him kindness and showed him some kind of affection, yeah, he chose he chose his people. So Arthur, yeah, and then I think there comes a point in the in the story where Arthur where the race kind of make the team choose between Arthur and the race. Everybody involved was just, you know, just a lot of fun to work with. I mean, we were in some really tough conditions, like in the middle of a jungle at some point or like in a really remote place. And so it was inevitable that we kind of all um, kind of bonded together to get to tell this story. And it was wonderful to have um, Mikhail as well um, and um, Elena too just like there as like a reminder of whose story we were telling um, and yeah Simon was really great I mean a lot of the time we were just like yes we were in oh I know it's so sleepy oh yeah okay have a nap I get it um, so yeah we, I think we just had often like really tough conditions and you know we were just like kind of running and gunning at sometimes but there was lots of um really challenging things that we all kind of just overcame together and i think um simon seemed to have a really clear vision of what he wanted working with the crew and the the, t the actors well obviously like mark is an incredibly talented actor, experienced actor, and I've, you know, watched so many of his movies, so it was so amazing for me to um, uh, work with him, and he was just great and collaborative and wants everybody to win, and, and Simon, similarly, was just, like, just really, like, supportive, and, yeah, uh, it was it was really great, and um, I was, I hadn't worked with Simu and um, Ali before, but what just, like, lovely people and you know I feel like by the end of the project we all kind of had bonded in a way like a team would have because of the kind of conditions we were in in the middle of nowhere you know doing these kind of extreme sports in a way together and like you know I'd certainly am not like a confident kayaker or a confident like trail bike rider by in like at all so you know sometimes you're like having to be really vulnerable with people around and you're like doing this thing that kind of scares you and so I think um I mean personally I felt like to share that with these people um these actors and and with Simon also like it's just you just it, it kind of bonds you in a way that is just inevitable so uh, the story of the film is essentially about a team of adventure racers who are competing in the World Championship in the Dominican Republic. Um, all four of the racers are there for very different reasons. They all have a lot riding on it. And essentially, Michael gives a meatball to a stray dog. And then three days later, several hundred miles later, this dog shows up and has been following, this entire, following them this entire time, which is kind of inconceivable considering how these guys race. They kayak, they climb, they trek, and this dog has followed them. My character is Olivia. Olivia is a world-class climber. She is the daughter of a famous and very well-revered um, climber called Hugo Baker. And, you know, she is coming to this race with a lot riding on it. So we kind of learn at the beginning that her father is ill. He's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and he's been given a year to live. And um, Olivia really holds her own and is very, very kind of beneficial to the group, group in many ways. So that's kind of awesome. Yukai the dog, who plays our title character, Arthur, is just a joy and he's so good and so clever and he's such a sweet, sweet dog. <laughs> like I basically, in, at any given opportunity, just try and snuggle him as much as possible. And he's so well-trained and he's so well-behaved and he's new to this like acting business, but he's a star darling, you know, he's, He's about to make it big. 
you would just think it was a movie, but then you realize that this is based on a true story and you're like, what? It like blew my mind. And I'm such an animal lover. And I guess my first impression was just like, was like, that's what I would do. <laughs> I would save Arthur too. <laughs> And um, I instantly was just like, ah, oh, this is a really special story. I knew nothing about adventure racing, not a one thing. I mean, the sound of it, adventure racing kind of, it gives it away. But I think I couldn't actually fathom what these athletes do. And it was incredible and actually so much fun to research and watch some of the World Series. And like there's loads of great uh, videos on uh, YouTube. I just was like blown away by what these guys train for and complete. And Michael being here has been actually really special because obviously this is a version of his story and he went through this with Arthur who sadly passed away right before we started filming. And so I think him being here and giving his point of view and like it's been really great like asking him stories about when this moment happened like how were you feeling what was the situation like you know and he has brought a lot of insight into that and where he was at psychologically where his team was at psychologically and I found it to be really really beneficial and he's also just so much fun and such a lovely guy and um, it's been really lovely having him here and meeting him when it comes down to it, what is the right thing to do? And, you know, do we have compassion and empathy for this dog, this dog that just followed us? And I think you can apply that to all animals, all people, our environment, our planet, all of that. Like, are we kind? Are we doing the right thing? And I think that is what I think people should take away from it. One stunt in particular on the, on the zip line is when we've kind of attached, we've created a rig so we can ride to the other side on Michael's line as opposed to, because Olivia's is, doesn't work. So it's essentially a stunt where I unhook myself and I am attached to my bike, which is attached to Michael's bike, which is attached to him. And then we ride on a zip line. And that was a very specific rig, a very specific stunt where I essentially let go and then free fall. And I had to let go myself <laughs> and free fall until I'm caught on the end of it, which was actually terrifying. Olivia definitely puts her team to task a couple of times throughout the movie. There's some sticky situations the team finds themselves in and Olivia takes control and is like, this is what we're doing. And um, one, moment in particular is where they take a shortcut that Chick has suggested and uh, they kind of find themselves at a wall and at this point they're biking so they have bike, bike mountain bikes with them so what do they do so they end up <laughs> at the suggestion from uh, a suggestion from Olivia is that they tie their bikes to their backpacks and climb the wall and then we have an amazing sequence where we find a zip line and we're like, okay, I guess that's how we're getting across the canyon. And then Olivia kind of gets stuck halfway. One of her, um, one of the cables blows and Michael has to come and get her. Well, obviously we have Mark Wahlberg playing Michael and uh, working with him has been really fun. And um, it, he's, he's got loads of great ideas and he's very collaborative which has been really nice and I feel like he's really kind of like Michael is very much a leader in the story. We have uh, Ali who plays Chick, our navigator, who is <laughs> just so fun and like I have really enjoyed working with Ali. He really, he, he's a little prankster, like he likes a prank that one. And um, definitely we've had a lot of uh, laughs together. And um, his character is kind of on his last hurrah, really. As like Michael, it's kind of like the last race. Simu Liu, who is um, just like such a sweetheart. And, you know, we're like similar in age. And so we've, um, we've had quite a lot of banter. That's quite fun. And um, yeah. He plays Leo, who is 
kind of a former teammate of Michael, and so there's a bit of friction there between them. 